Hey everyone, and welcome. Technivorous here. Today we are going to be taking a look at Kira 5.0 a little closer now that it's out of beta and the full version has been released. We'll go over some upgrades and bug fixes since the beta and look at a few settings, but first, that's right, I need you to reduce your Z offset over that subscribe button and give it a good first layer squish so you don't miss any of my other 3D printing and tech videos. And also, if you have any questions about Kira, leave them in the comments. I love answering Kira questions, and I have a whole playlist of them you can check out right here. Now that that's out of the way, uh, let's have a look at the change log. So here we are in the all-new Kira 5.0. This is no longer the beta. This is the full version. Basically, in the What's New dialog, if you saw my beta video, it goes over the same stuff. It's basically featuring the new engine. It's going to tell you that it's a lot faster gives you quicker print times with higher quality prints and things of that nature. It's also highlighting the new streamlined marketplace integration uh, and most of these extensions as we'll see here in a minute are working now so that's a bonus and we're gonna skip past these next two because they're Ultimaker specific and we're gonna come in here so all of this stuff as I said if you haven't seen the beta is worth taking a look at it's describing the new Arachne engine and as it says, they're pleased to announce their new slicing engine is here in Kira. This is the all-new engine using variable line widths when preparing files for printing, meaning you can now print thin and intricate parts more accurately. So that's pretty cool and works pretty well. So a uh, couple Ultimaker improvements for their profiles, and we're looking at other new features. Basically, in 5.0, they changed the Kira icon, they changed the splash screen, they changed a bunch of other stuff in here. Um, settings for metal printing implemented that's something to keep an eye on coming in the future because that is pretty pretty sweet I don't know if you saw their showcase featuring this but definitely worth a check out as well and then they have all these bug fixes that they fixed between the alpha and the second alpha and the beta of Arachne and if we take a look at this you can see that there are a bunch of them having to do with the fan scale and a bunch of other stuff. So uh, I put out a video pleading with people to test the beta and submit their bug reports. I don't know if that was any help to them at all, but as you can see, there are a ton of bug fixes after the beta. So if you're having any of these issues or any of these were the reason why you weren't trying 5.0, definitely jump in and download it now because they fixed a ton of stuff, especially some crashes you can see in here. Um, there was a bug with drag and drop where you couldn't drag and drop items, uh, models in, and that was annoying. Uh, there was a bug where scroll bars were showing up on two tips, so, tool tips. So if I highlight, um, let's close this. This is basically the ones we're going to cover here. If I highlight this, it was compressing this box and putting a scroll bar. However, there's no way to keep it open. So if you go over there and try to click the scroll bar, um, it wasn't working. So you couldn't read all of the tool tips, and that was kind of a hassle. Uh, one of the important things to remember is that we've lost our shell setting and it is now walls. That is your setting for the shell. And there are some pretty basic settings in here. Most of this hasn't changed uh, other than minimum feature size. That's a new addition. That's a great one to have. Obviously, you want to leave print thin walls on. Um, horizontal expansion is back, which is another great setting if you're printing stuff with holes. Uh, and then there's some more stuff down here, and this is where I really got interested. Now, I haven't looked at where they put those metal printing settings yet, but I have noticed that there are some things down here, such as a printer section. So now, uh, you can modify, okay, so machine type, printer settings, Creality Ender 3 Pro, okay? That's pretty cool, um, and it's gonna give you your filament diameter, it's going to give you some settings. These are basically settings you're going to be able to use as start and end G code commands, and it's overwriting those in your start and end G code. So you can make it wait for the build plate to heat up and wait for the nozzle. Obviously, you want to do that so you don't try to cold extrude. Um, and then there are several other settings that are particular to your printer, which is pretty cool that you can now see all of these right here in the main window without having to go through all the hoopla of finding it up here and all that other bogus nonsense so uh, a little bit streamlined pretty cool feeder wheel diameter 
oh man that's cool I'm gonna have to check that out and see if that's accurate for what I'm using there's a lot of settings in here guys so definitely check this out I'm gonna have a special video dedicated to just this section coming up so I highly encourage you to subscribe and hit that notification bell that way you don't miss that and look at all the bridge settings in here I turned on enable bridge settings I don't know why they still have this in experimental it seems to me that it works pretty well um, this is another one you might want to check out. So basically turning this on will have it detect when it needs to bridge and it'll alter the settings by slowing down, changing the fan speed and things like that. And then you can set the settings for when it switches to a bridge and there are a ton of them. So uh, Kira 5 is amazing. If you haven't seen my accuracy video, definitely check it out. I put it up against Kira 4.13 and it was definitely more accurate. I was really happy with the results. The video seems to be getting good feedback, so you can check that out after this video. Basically, guys, I'm here to recommend Kira 5.0. I definitely think this is a version you should download and try. It's what they call a benchmark or a watershed moment of uh, development where things have changed enough that if you're not using this version going forward, you're going to be behind the curve. 3D printing is a pretty fast developing uh, sector of the tech industry so you definitely want to stay ahead of the ahead of the game um, and Kira 5 is definitely going to help you do that that's going to be it for this video guys as I said if you have any questions leave them in the comments make sure you put Kira question in the comments that's how I find the comments to do videos on and Technivorous out